Now that we've got our models in place for this quick scene and some basic materials on them, I want to dive a little bit into what are some of the basic material controls we have over some of the parameters here. So I've gone ahead and turned off our ray tracer so that we can interact with this a little more quickly. And we're just going to kind of take a look at each one of these. So each one of these objects, if I select them, you'll see this material panel here. Each one of these has a unique set of parameters. Like this painted a chip one, a chip paint one, I can go in here and I can change like the top color of the material there. For this uh, porcelain, I actually have more control of it because this is a parametric material. So I can actually control things like the, um, the look of the uh, pattern that's in there. We've got some default ones. I can also add in my own custom one. Additionally, I can go in and change things like, you know, obviously the color, but I can do things like uh, adjusting the line opacity. This is auto save pop out that up on me. I can adjust the line opacity on this. So it's a little bit more thinner than uh, a little bit thicker on there as well. Um, and then you can, you can do like the rough. So just basic controls down here. And same thing with the car paint. Um, bum, bum, bum. I have control over the flake size. Again, individual uh, control. So each, each material will have their own unique parameters. Some of the other things that are not as unique uh, that, that do exist for all of them is two things that I want to draw attention to. Oh, additionally, inside of all of these, there are usually presets that you can uh, drag and drop, or you can just uh, select which ones. And it's just, it, all this does is, is changes the preset controls down below there at the bottom. Now, two controls that every single one of these materials will give you are, um, the ability to control the map size, the resolution of the map. So you can see if I turn on the ray tracer here, by default, they're all at 1K, but they can go up to 4K as well. So if I turn on the ray tracer, you can, you can see this difference here in just a second. Let's give it at 1K and jump it up to 4K here. And you can see now it's a higher resolution. So it's a little bit uh, more render intensive and labor intensive, but it does look a lot better. And depending on how close you're getting to it, that'll that'll make a big difference. Gonna go ahead and flip that back down to 1K, turn off our ray tracer here. And the other thing that I wanna draw attention to is the way that the materials are applied. So by default, they're applied using the UV projection method that we saw earlier. Right, that we kind of talked about. So basically it's like the rapid vapor, it's a 2D projection. We also have the ability to um, to do this as a triplanar projection. So this will ignore the UVs and just kind of project the material onto the object from around it. So it's kind of hard to see um, what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take down the, seat, the blending. And you can see now there's a line here, there's a line over here. Um, and what this is doing is it's kind of creating a soft transition between all of it. Because occasionally, if you can imagine unwrapping a gift, there are going to be seam lines, especially if you have a sphere, right? If I have a sphere, there's going to be a point where they, they kind of pinch back together. In fact, I'm going to go ahead um, and add a sphere to the seam here so you can kind of see it, what's happening. And I'll apply um, the same material to that. So if I apply like the Japanese porcelain to this, you might see a point where it starts to kind of pinch up here at the top. What the triplanar method does is it allows that to kind of smooth out. Now the downside is on some of these, it'll, it kind of, it fudges the difference. It kind of fudges them together. So it could be a little bit tricky on patterns, but it's just another option for you when you are um, applying your scene. So generally speaking, I will use triplanar on anything that's a little bit organic like a concrete, but for anything that's more pattern based, you do want to stick to the UV so that they do uh, line up well. So those are the basics of interacting with your material. You just want to play with those sliders. You want to make sure your resolution is up to the right part, and you want to make sure that you are using the UV or tripe later methodology there.